Hello, my name is Sarah Stout and I am a senior team leader with Usborne Books and More. And I'm really excited to share with you today some reading tips for families, no matter what age of children you have in your life. So the the most of the tips that I'm going to share with you today are coming from this book. It's called The Read Aloud Handbook by Jim Trelease. And this book is amazing. I um, I'm actually a literacy uh, specialist because I I am an English and German teacher and so I know a lot about I know a lot about how to raise readers but I felt like even with all the classes I took in college this book really expound upon that and gave some real life um, great tips for for our parents and caregivers so I'm excited to share with you some of those things today so first of all um, I want to share with you that how Kids, he talks about in this book that kids who have a hundred books in their home have higher test scores than kids who don't, which I thought was kind of cool. But it's not just that; you have to read with the kids. So that was the um, the, the kids that had a hundred books and had parents that read with them will do higher on test scores than kids who don't. Um, he also said that kids who have 500 books in their home have an average of 3.9 more years of education, resulting in nearly. I think it's, um, I can't remember if it's $1 million or $2 million more in lifetime earnings. So I thought that that was really cool. I mean, 500 books sounds like a lot, but we ourselves have at least 500 children books in our home. And it really, truly, as we've added to our collection, it has made a difference. And it's been neat to see um, my sons and his cousins, their interest in reading has just flourished whenever they're at our house because... They know that I advertise reading in our home. So we know that kids are being advertised to all the time, whether it's with, you know, on TV or at the grocery store or whatever, kids are being advertised to. So I challenge you to advertise reading to your children. So you can do that by having books facing out so that um, you can have, you know, you've seen on Pinterest, I'm sure, rain gutter bookshelves um, and having books facing out. We actually got some spice racks at Ikea and have um, and have some books that face out in my son's room. That it was just a cheap and easy thing to be able to hang on the wall, but it's really, it was interesting when we got those, all of a sudden he wants to read those books that are facing out because it truly is advertising to them. So, um, so also, every time you read aloud to your child, you're advertising reading. So, it's important to have books everywhere, not just in one spot. I know that I like to compartmentalize and ha I used to have them only in one section of our house, but after I read this book, I realized the importance of having them everywhere to truly advertise reading wherever you are in the house. And all of a sudden, my son wants to read first thing in the morning because there's books by my bed. He wants to read in the car because there's books in the car. He wants to read in the potty or while he's in the bath, he wants to be read to. He wants to read at the table while he's eating a snack. So truly having those books and baskets all around the house can make a big difference for your children. Um, you can also, another another thing that he talked about in here is talking about surrounding your children uh, with books. So he made the comparison that the best skiers come from the places with the most snow. And he also said that the places um, that have the most horses and ranches have the best rodeo stars. And so it's the same thing with books. If you If you want your kids to be good readers, you have to have good books that are at their age level, at their ability level, and at their interest level. So those are some things that you really have to think about. The The rule of thumb for that is that when kids change their clothes, when they grow up in size and clothes, think about getting new books for them because they probably have changed their interests and or their reading level. Um, and even as he talks about in here, their listening level because kids can listen better that they can um, they can listen at a higher level than they can read. So that's why it's really important for kids to be read aloud too. And he, he asked the question here, when should you stop reading aloud? He said never, not even when they go to college. And I think it's kind of a fun thing as a family to be able to read together. Um, I know that I had a friend who they read together as a family and they were going on a road trip and one of their teenagers brought a friend with them on their road trip and they were reading Harry Potter um, as they were driving in the car. And when the friend got in, he complained. He just was like, oh, you know, he's 17 years old. And he just complained. But by the end of the road trip, you know, it was a three or four hour drive. He's like, wait, he didn't want to get out of the car. He didn't want them to stop reading the book. He wanted to know what was going to happen next. And so really reading can can really bring together families. And it does increase not only their, their reading level, but their listening and comprehension levels as well. So another thing that he talks about in here is he talks about... Um, 
talks about modeling reading. So we are modeling things just like we're advertising. We are modeling things to the children in our, in our lives. So our habits, our expressions, physical habits. So they will pick up on your habit of reading. Something that is hard for me and I'm sure for you is I seem to have books on my phone a lot. And so I try to, when I do read a book on my phone, I'm very outward in telling my son, okay, I'm this, I'm reading a book right now. And so that he knows that I'm not just on, on my phone. Um, I do try to get more books in my hand as well so that I can be able to model reading and show him that reading is important to me as well. So another way to model reading is, like I said, reading aloud to your children. And you should really never stop reading. He said, and I'll quote, the single most important activity for building knowledge, the knowledge required for eventual success is reading aloud to children. It is a practice that should continue throughout the grades. And that is from the U.S. Commission on Reading. So like I said, you may know a child's reading level, but you may not know his listening level. So the popular Cosby show was written at a fourth grade reading level, yet first graders who couldn't read the script can clearly be able to listen and understand the show. So children can hear and understand stories that are more complicated and interesting than anything they could read on their own. And in addition, those stories can be able to tell and teach them things that they couldn't have learned otherwise. And so reading is just so important. Yes, it's an investment to have books have books in your home and, and to take the time to be able to read with your children. And sometimes it can be hard, but I really promise you that you should not underestimate the power of building up your home library and the impact that it will have later on your children. So thanks again for participating in this party today. I hope that you learned something and I hope that this encourages you to, um, to take some more time to practice reading in your own home. Have a great day.